Twitter is saying over a hundred hours of gameplay. Oh man, hang on a second. All right, all right, all right. There's so much more information to go over. Let's begin that now because we're not even, we, we just scratched the surface of the chat is like giving me a billion pieces of information. Here's a big one. The Kitase announcement, because this always happens. Uh, the Final Fantasy VII, Re Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been set on release for April 29th. The second installment remake project feature elements from the previous game, as well as greatly enhanced features such as the vast world map to explore and synergy abilities with party members. Before I even continue, it's starting to make sense why 16 and 7 Remake 2 uh, are paired next to each other in terms of releases. It was always weird to me before 16 came out where it's like, man, we're going to get these big zones in FF16. Wow, isn't that what 7 Remake is going to be? Maybe one game is going to be that, one game isn't? And then ultimately 16 came out and you realize like, oh, there's not a lot of exploration to 16. You know, most of their zones are kind of like simple and, 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 and basic. And they're not open world at all. They're just like relatively simple zones focusing on combat stuff, right? So the question was like, oh, why are they going to have two games doing the same thing? That's weird. 16 obviously did not have that, right? It was, it was going for something much different. So now it makes sense that like, hey, you want your big world to explore kind of thing? Actually... That's Rebirth. There's no more confusion anymore now that 16 is out. That is Rebirth. The story will unfold more dramatically than ever before with a rapid pace of major twists and turns. We know fans are dying to see one... What? Shut up, Katase. <laughs> what? We know fans are dying to see one... Cute. Rebirth can be enjoyed on its own as a standalone adventure, with the party leaving Midgar to explore the wide world beyond. For those wishing to deepen their understanding of the story, a recap of the previous game will also be provided. We hope that both fans of those who have never played Final Fantasy before will enjoy this game. Is there a part? There's a part two? Oh, from Hamaguchi. This is the this is the new lead director of the game. For anybody that doesn't know, Remake Part 1 was directed by Nomura and Naoki Hamaguchi. He was the co-director of part one. In FF7 Rebirth, Nomura is no longer the director of this game. He's obviously working on a ton of projects right now. So Naoki Hamaguchi, we, we've, uh, we have long been presuming that Hamaguchi was likely the lead director of, of FF7 Remake part one. It's just that Nomura's close association with the franchise, you know, was definitely there. So he's still the, he's the creative director of part two, which is seemingly more of like an advisory role than before. So it to me, it always felt like part one feels a lot different than a typical Nomurian game outside of some elements, for sure. It was always seemed like, I felt like Hamaguchi probably has a pretty good feel of what's going on. And granted, I think that went so well that they gave him full control over part two. And now Nomura is too busy. The guy just is doing too much stuff. So I'm fairly excited because this guy feels like he has a pretty good grasp on what people love about Final Fantasy VII. We're finally able to announce the release date for all of you. We've been working tirelessly uh, on Rebirth since the release of 7 Remake. They they officially announced, chat, that this game was in development in October of 2019. Just as a confirmation, October 2019 was the first time they even uttered the word that we've begun development on even this, the next games. So it's been a while. And can't wait for the to the experience our labor of love. In this title, Cloud and his friends will have fled Midgar, will be setting on an adventure across an expansive world on an unknown adventure in pursuit of Sephiroth. While the main storyline is bigger and more ambitious than the previous game's narrative, Rebirth embraces the concept of free exploration. While with compelling stories, good minigames, fun minigames, powerful monsters, and so much more to find throughout the world map. We hope you will explore this world in great detail as nearly 100 hours of adventure awaits. You should just say two discs, right? I don't want this 100 hour bullshit. I want, I want, describe that to me in disc form. Discs are now a measure of time, at least for me personally. I measure time by discs. So give me the disc time. But wait, how, how many days do we have left till FF7 comes out, Chad? Rebirth, that is about uh, 215 discs away. All right, good, we're good. 200 discs, that's not that far away. We can begin the countdown timer. How many discs are we away from FF7 Rebirth? 
We hope you take this new Final Fantasy game experience in your hands to enjoy. Another thing I got to mention out here, because this is all very good news. A while back, Naoki Hamaguchi was interviewed and I think has some pretty telling information about how the world of FF7 Rebirth might actually be. And I have to, I've said this many times before, and I have to remind everybody again, this dude loved Horizon. And whatever you feel about Horizon, its narrative, its characters, whatever, that doesn't, that doesn't really matter specifically. You have to look at Horizon as like a game design, right? What do you do in the world of Horizon? Like, how do you engage with that, that game's environment? And I haven't played all of those games. I know Simmons has. And I know Simmons says the world and like the storytelling, uh, the world storytelling in Horizon is really good. It, the problem with Horizon is when you eventually get into combat and he describes it, you'd enter, you enter a world of Eurojank. And it's like, ugh, uh, it sucks. So again, there's some things when you run around like the, the world of Horizon that's kind of like enjoyable and fun. Simmons really hates the combat in Horizon. He really doesn't like it. So ultimately like, well, what if you have like a world like that and, and it gets, you have the, the engagement of the combat of a seven remake, right? Maybe that'll be a lot more fun. Again, I think there's ways that Horizon in terms of an overall game design, I feel fit FF7's world pretty well in terms of exploration, in terms of moving around the environment and going and engaging in places and getting into side quests and all that kind of stuff, right? Doesn't mean specifically how you engage and fight enemies. It mostly is how do you engage an open world? Amaguchi has said before he loves Horizon and he loves the world of the game and he loves like playing that game. So I'm very curious how that's going to translate to the open world narrative and the open world gameplay theory of FF7 Rebirth. How do you engage the environments? How do you engage the enemies? How do you engage side quests? How do you engage collectibles? Like, do you collect things, right? What do you do? If there was one thing that 16 taught us is that they gave us a world that had nothing to do in it, <laughs> you know? A whole bunch of maps that look really beautiful that were just there to run back and forth in. And it's like, oh man. Like these, these zones are really pretty, but there's just nothing to do in them. You run and they fight every single enemy and that's all you really get. So that's what's like kind of worrisome is that like, I don't, I, they need to do things. Like we need to engage with the world in some way that is like different than that. And ultimately 15 did some things with that, but not great, right? 15, you can't even like really climb up mountains or anything, right? 15 is a game that most of the environment you run across is flat land. You drive up to places, but you just, you can't even jump on rocks and shit for the most part. How do you engage with this stuff? And already we see things in the trailer that is like, hey, Chocobo environmental Metroidvania shit. You see like, hey, like I see that I can go up here. My, I'm gonna bring my bird back to this area later on. And now my, uh, my chicken can run up here because I have this chicken or I have a new chicken that can fly over this thing because I have a new chicken or I have the buggy because I can now go over this thing because I have a, a buggy, right? Like that's the kind of thing that is interesting where it's like, oh, now you're engaging with the world in a way that is multifaceted. Now you got to come back and new things happen. Not entirely metroidvania e, but still there's things. So anyway, long story short, Hamaguchi uh, really, really liked Horizon. And you have to start thinking of that. Like, how do you solve environmental puzzles with traversal? And I think we already saw that answered in the trailer. Uh, from Nomura-san, uh, this is the second title of the trilogy. It covers between the start of the journey outside Midgard and the midpoint of the original FF7. It feels like 7 Remake was an introduction to the world and a preparation for this journey. 7 Rebirth serves as an illustration of the incidents that starts the journey, an exploration of the people tied to it and the journey itself heading toward its climax. But many elements were carefully selected for this title because this is a series. We have the unique opportunity to review and incorporate feedback from the previous title, such as the increasing the number of characters. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I am sure that the bar for the next work will be raised even higher. Now that we have included so many spectacular elements in this work, but even so, the entire team continues to work diligently and without compromise on its development. There is also the looming question of what fate awaits, whether you have experienced the original or will embark on an adventure with fresh eyes. We hope you face the ending of this work on your own terms. Those are some interesting statements there. To me, that, that comes across as like, 
we're we're changing shit. There's some spooky language going on there. there may, maybe it's some translation shit. They're definitely trying to. Uh, so Katase and Nomura are leaving a wafting Mako funk of mystery and uh, and, and, and unknowing. They're, they're just continuing all the crazy gaslighting that's happening at the end of part one, unknown adventure type stuff. There's a Mako funk that we're huffing right now and we don't know exactly where they're going because still, we still don't know Zack's actual involvement. <laughs> to be real, we know that th we get a, a pretty good idea that there's a couple of timelines, right? There's two separate timelines that are going to merge with the reunion at this point, but how Zack and his party members are involved, <laughs> still don't know, brother. We're still, we're still kind of left in the dark. Yeah, the world will be saved, but will you? Oh, the world will be saved, but will you? That's it. They're talking about Aerith. Again, leading to mystery. They're, 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 they're hyping up the fact that she's going to be savable. They're hyping that. They're, they're hyping it up, man. Things are starting to make a bit more sense. Aerith or Zack? Yeah, good question. And that could that could actually mean several characters. I think the intention is that it's supposed to feel like it's Aerith, you know? Uh, the blog, the PlayStation blog, hold on a second. Rebirth developer interviews reveal fresh gameplay details as a new trailer debuts at State of Play. Today at a State of Play included a brand new look at Rebirth. The trailer sir, uh, surely will be a delight to long-term Seven fans as well as new players eager, eager to enjoy what happens. In, after the conclusion of 7 Remake, as Cloud and the company embark on a journey that takes them to the world outside of Midgar, in the trailer we caught glimpses of new party members sprawling open areas to explore. They keep saying this, man. Like, they are going ham. They're going so ham at, like, our game is open world, we're gonna give you a fuckload of stuff to run around and look at. A fuckload of stuff. Um, and the reimagining of some iconic moments from the original game. Rather than leave you speculating, key staff on the game joined us to share uh, not only more insight on the trailer, but also additional gameplay details about the game. The roundtable includes Seven Rebirth, Totase, Nomura, and Hamaguchi. Um, oh, they say different things here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Can you explain what we're seeing about the combat system? Has it been, has it remained untouched? Since FF7 Remake, or have you altered anything for 7 Rebirth? I mean, obviously, there's dual techs and all this wild stuff. I want to highlight the new synergy moves <laughs> from the battle system. The new mechanic allows the player to use synergy commands and abilities freely at any time by using up a gauge charge in a similar manner to limit breaks. Most nerdy shit ever. Hold on a second. You can use synergy commands, new thing, and, uh, and abilities freely, different thing, at any time, at any time, doesn't require ETB, by using a gauge charge in a similar manner to limit breaks. That, I, I need to see it in action. My brain is already racked. <laughs> My brain is already racked. Yeah, we saw the pips, right? Yeah, I get it. We saw the pips in the trailer, but like how that builds, so through battles, players will feel the relationships and bonds that have developed between the characters even more so than the previous game. We've also added skill trees as a new element of character growth. You can unlock synergy abilities through skill trees too. With many new materia and new abilities not seen in the first game are available as well. So players will have even more options to customize and build character loadouts. This guy went like 100% like RPG nerd mode up my ass. This dude was like, I, <laughs> Nico was like, <laughs> like, he just went and he went nuts. Like this is the Baldur's Gate three of Final Fantasy games is what it's sounding like. You just described essentially like ultimate nerd Final Fantasy shit. Like what? How much, how much are we talking here? What? I don't, we're not gonna have bear sex or anything like that, but you know, like all the nerdy stat shit and all that kind of like, yeah, multi-classing, like all that bullshit that people love about that stuff that I didn't as much because it's like D&D &D and I don't like D&D, &D, but still, like it's got, what? Are we talking about like, this is some ultimate like nerdy RPG shit, like classes and builds and loadouts and what? I'm gonna read that again. Cause this, this sounds, 
to be completely honest, what is described in this shit, because I, okay, I like Final Fantasy VII, I like its characters, I like its world, I like its story, obviously. But what I like about Final Fantasy VII so much is that it's a fun game to play. Like, it's such a video gamey ass game. Even if you go back to the OG game, it's got problems because the first quarter of the game doesn't give you a ton of stuff to work with. But after that first quarter, they start hamming you a ton of like things and tools to mess around with and material loadouts and all of this stuff. So it's like, oh man, this is fun. Once you leave Midgar, it's like, oh, this is enjoyable. I can like, manipulate enemies and get their abilities. I can now run around and make weird combinations with characters and stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's one of the parts of FF7 that I think is genuinely enjoyable was all the crazy materia min-maxing that you can do with characters and figuring out, but if I can combine this with this, does that affect that? Hmm, I'm gonna try, it works, what the hell? Like that part is some of the most fun gameplay wise about FF7. To the point where it like, it's screwed with me, because the other Final Fantasy games after this that I, I try don't have stuff like that. They the, the most interesting thing that happened in Final Fantasy games after that was like a sphere grid or the job system in Tactics. So to me, the job system in Tactics had a lot of experimentation that was really fun. So again, FF7 was a game that first introduced me to that shit. Oh, Gambits. Yeah, Gambits was an also, whoa, Gambits was really interesting. Junction quickly became unenjoyable in FF8 for me personally. Junction was like, eh, but still nothing really matched the crazy experimentation that FF7 OG had with figuring out what I can do with these characters. Like, how can I mix and do all this stuff? So again, FF7 isn't just a game with like cool characters, cool story, great visuals, like yada, yada, yada. It was a thing that never, nothing ever matched like how much fun I had with Materia. So to describe what they're describing here, Hamaguchi goes so ham on describing what they're doing gameplay wise as an expansion of what we had in the original. Uh, an expansion on FF7 Remake, because they still had a fairly decent chunk of materia with some pretty interesting things you could do with it. There wasn't that much experimentation in uh, in 7 Remake. There wasn't that much, but it was still pretty good. It wasn't bad. We obviously want more. And it was like, oh, give us loadouts. Give us like all this crazy shit. Give us like stuff I really want to like, I want to play a game a certain way and then play through it again a completely different way and like get some wildly different thing. To be real, 7 Remake didn't really do that. There was, there was really not ways that you can play the game vastly different, but they did give us New Game Plus, and New Game Plus was like, oh, well, what if we just remove items? Oh, okay. Well, that actually was pretty fun, you know? To be, to be real, 7 Remake's New Game Plus was pretty fun with no items, and that was a new way to play the game, but beyond that, is there, like, really varied ways to enjoy FF7 Remake? Ah, I mean, you kind of got to go out of your way to, to do that. Now, with that in mind, Read this again. You have synergy commands that can be used at any time with gauge charges in a similar way to limit breaks. That That's sounding like there's things that you can do in combat outside of just building ATB. So through battles, you're gonna build relationships with characters even more so than previous games because now they added skill trees based on that, based on those relationships of character growth with new synergy abilities through those skill trees as well. Many new materia, with new abilities not seen in the first game are available, so players will have even more options to customize and build character loadouts. So the skill tree of part one, God, we've only covered one uh, paragraph. The skill tree of part one was in the weapons, right? So the, the crazy space universe weapon skill tree was kind of the options that you had to, to build out and fill out each, uh, each thing. It's making it sound like they're maybe not gonna have that again, and, but instead put it on the character, where now a character is gonna have their own unique sphere grid or skill tree or some shit in relation to working with other characters. So maybe, I don't know. We, it's it's hard to tell if we're not gonna get the the same interesting weapon unlocking thing, because I did like that. The the cool weapon thing, hey, you get this new weapon, it does this new crazy shit. Oh, I'm like, that was a great idea. That was some very fun RPG bullshit that they threw into seven part one. Viewers got a glimpse of Red 13 in combat as part of the new trailer. Pa players are now able to control him directly. Uh, what can they expect in terms of his abilities and what makes him distinct? and a great party member in FF7 Rebirth's battles. So we're talking about Red 13 combat. Uh, the development team challenged themselves to give Red a new playstyle that felt different from the other characters. Good. 
He doesn't just have an ATP gauge, but also uses his own revenge gauge mechanic. Oh shit. Uh, his revenge gauge charges when he guards against enemy attacks. And he could spend that charge to use various, guarding is in the game again, obviously. Uh, he can spend that charge to use various abilities once the gauge is filled. Okay, so he's a defensive character. We've designed Red 13 as a new type of character that requires the player to strike a balance between offense and defense strategy using the ATP gauge as a defensive. So he's like a tank. Interesting. I thought Red 13 would have been a character that they went full offense on. Instead, they made him a tank. Or like a balancing tank build? Huh. Yeah, he's more defensive than Barrett potentially, or he is another defensive style character. That's an interesting take because Barrett is like the Sentinel, right? Yeah, I think he even has an ability called Sentinel in the other one, but it's like they're, they're trying to strike a balance. He's defensive and then offensive. Yeah, okay. Um, that's an interesting take. I wasn't ready for that. We've seen Red and Kate Sith shown in playable characters in the footage release also shows another character who looks like Vincent. So will he be playable as well? Will the party expand further? Nomura says the original party members are all present in Rebirth. In the previous title, Seven Remake, Red 13 became an accompanying member in the second half of the game, and he'll be an official playable party member starting in Rebirth. Surely, or similarly, there are characters who are accompanying members in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that will become official party members in the next title. Similarly, there are characters who are accompanying members in FF7 Rebirth that will be playable party members in the next title. I'm, I'm, can, I'm sort of trying to process this accompanying. So, okay, so we're saying in a hypothetical situation, in FF7 Rebirth, there's going to be party members that accompany you in this game similar to the way Red 13 was an accompanying party member in part one, right? So all they're saying is that there's gonna be party members that join you on this adventure that will not be fully playable. They will be just there hanging out with you. But in the next game, they will become official party members. So are they saying that will be Sid and Vincent? Interesting. Yeah, we know Yuffie's playable. We've literally seen Yuffie playable. But what that gives me is the impression, that gives me the impression that potentially Sid and Vincent are gonna show up and help out, but not actually be playable. Which seems weird that they show Sid. That they show, I'm sorry, they show Vincent, right? Maybe they're talking about Turks and shit? I don't know. It says the original party members will all be present in FF7 Rebirth. So they're talking about all the characters that were accompanying members and from FF7 Remake Part 1. So they're pretty much talking about Red 13. In the previous title, Red 13, yeah, and then they say Red 13, he's officially playable now. Yeah, this is confusing. To me, this sort of, this sort of gives the impression that Vincent and potentially Sid might not be playable until the next game. Yeah, present doesn't mean playable. Right, I get it. But there's there the, the I, I, this is this is almost more confusing than then just saying Vincent's not playable, right? Just tell me if Vincent's playable or not. Do we have to wait till the next game to get Vincent and Sid? Because that would be pretty weird. Considering where it looks like we're going in the story, we're going all the way to Medeal, dude. Like that is way after Rocket Town. We're going all the way, you know, potentially to the Northern Crater. So that's way after Sid. That's way after. Nibelheim, like what the hell's going on? You obviously are in Nibelheim when you're running into Vincent. Maybe they mean Zack? Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, to me, this this whole thing is is either not a confirmation or deconfirmation. I hope, hopefully we get more information about that from Tokyo Game Show of like, hey, do we know if these characters are gonna be, it's it's too vague. I think, uh, I will say, that's disappointing. If, if it goes the route where, yeah, we're gonna have characters uh, join you on the adventure, but you, you can't play as them yet again, that happens again? Where, yeah, Sid's gonna be back there doing jumps and all this stuff, and Vincent's gonna be back there shooting his gun, but you can't play as them? Again? Like, no, oh, man, I think I think that is disappointing. I will still throw that out right now. If, if that is the choice that they eventually make for this, that will be pretty lame. I mean, it isn't, it isn't a, a, a deal breaker, but it is like, come on, dude. Are they going to do the same thing that they did for part one, where Vincent is going to be DLC? I don't know. Well, we'll find out. I, I'm sure there'll be more information. Either way, 
Uh, I don't like this answer, Nomura. Me no likey. The answer was too Nomurian. I have to consult the elder gods or some shit to actually get some, some qualifying information here. Viewers caught a glimpse of Alexander and Odin. Can we expect more returning summons for Rebirth uh, or will any summons from Remake Return? There will be many other summons, <laughs> Hamaguchi. There will be much. In addition to those that have already been revealed in our previous videos, we also have some returning from FF7 Remake. In fact, the lineup of summons has actually been fleshed out over and above the previous game with new extended side content based on a summon who did not feature in the original Final Fantasy VII and even more besides. New summons from the OG? Granted, Huge crackpot theory is uh, n not KOTOR yet. No KOTOR just yet. Everyone's saying Knights of the Round. I, I get it. Y'all want Knights of the Round. I do too. Uh, to me, you don't you don't throw away Knights of the Round in, in part one. No, 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 no. To me, Knights of the Round becomes a actual story element and not just a side quest thing in part three. I, I hope we don't do anything with Knights of the Round in part two. I hope they, I mean, granted, it'll be fun if they do, but I think it would be way better if you actually make Knights of the Round a story thing for part three, that it's something you have to go and do, and it's a part of saving the world, of discovering this ancient goddamn mystical sorcery guys that are for some reason ancient knights and shit. Uh, sneaking into the original Junon, saw, saw players partake in the unique minigames. We saw the parade and many other minigames in the new original trailer, so we see the same minigames from the original playable. Yes, I mean, yeah. Obviously, yes, some minigames will be playable, but we've greatly increased the scope of what was in the original seven. In the original, Cloud sneaks into one of the units and a participating parade and joins in the performance, but in Rebirth, he becomes the leader of that unit, can customize the composition of the soldiers in the parade. The chosen unit composition will alter the performance, and it also goes without saying, that also affects how the minigame is played. <laughs> Spoilers! Spoilers! The parade to celebrate the inauguration of Rufus and the new president of Shinra is the climax of the first half of the original game. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So the development of the team was really enthused about making all the details for it. It's one of the moments I hope players enjoy the most. Yeah, it looks epic as shit. Junon is a big is a big moment, right? It's a big it's a big moment. Yeah, Fort Condor. No mention of Fort Condor anywhere. No Fort Condoring. And speaking of mini games, uh, we got a fun glimpse of the Golden Saucer. Do you? How do FF7 reversions uh, differ? I mean, they're all there. I think there's a lot of fans who point to the number and variety of mini games as one of the draws of the original Final Fantasy VII. Man gets it. He gets it. He gets it. This guy gets it. Uh, but for Re, uh, we have gone all out and created a huge number of mini games on a scale that surpasses even the original. Many of these minigames can be experienced in the main story, but we also have lots of unique and challenging ones that appear as part of the side stories you can find as you explore the world map. Yeah, so we, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Hamaguchi. Uh, we, we know that people love mini games in the original Final Fantasy VII, so we just did all those. Uh, we did all those and made them like bigger and crazier than ever before. Also, we made a whole bunch of new ones and made them side quests. We made them side quests. We made them optional. I, I, they get it. Like, I don't even, that, that, just literally reading that, honestly, like, wells my eyes with tears. They get it. How do you get it so... We have lots of unique minigames and challenges that appear as part of the side stories you can find as you explore the world map. Side stories comes across as that th these were uh, things that you don't have to do. These are just like extra things that we've put throughout our world to expand it. Like, holy shit, man. There might be players who will get caught up in all the fun mini games that they find that they aren't making progress in the main story. Guy gets it. Uh, it's just a part of FF7, right? This is why so many people have good impressions of Final Fantasy VII. This is why it's kind of like a landmark game because people, the way you play through FF7 is, is a lot different from person to person. Where you spent your time and how you did your adventure was so like, it, it happened at the same point for many people, but, but that is like the point. 
is that how you wanted to go about the world and enjoy it happens at certain points of the, the game. And people just f around. Yeah, I'm gonna go f around, see what the heck you can do. So for them to, to realize that like, yeah, like the way we need to recreate the feeling that people had with the OG FF7 of, I'm gonna go in the world and f around. Like that is, that's yeah, that was the point of it, right? That was, that's why FF7 is great, is that, yeah, I get it. There's a giant meteor in the sky and, you know, there is currently a huge robot on its way to Midgar to crush the shit out of it. But more importantly, I am waiting for my chickens to fuck to get a green one. Hold on. Okay, I got to go race it for another couple hours to make it have more, <laughs> to make it be more enthusiastic about the thing. I got to go to an island and kill some things to feed it so that the chickens will fuck. And if I don't do that, they just won't, okay? So give me a chance. Oh, I gotta go snowboarding. Let me go snowboarding because I gotta get my GP to go ride the roller coaster to get the reward of the the thing to feed my chickens. The monster's still attacking Midgar? Chill, bro. I'm wor- Okay, so now I'm gonna go get some more enemy skills because that's good. Anyway, there was always so many things to do in the world of FF7 that was fun, right? It was fun. I'm busy, you fix it. Go shoot it with the big gun. Gold Saucer is another iconic battle that we'll be eager to visit. Now you have approached redesigning this amusement park. All right. It feels like Hamaguchi's getting all the gameplay stuff, which is great. Players will be able to visit the Golden Saucer in the middle section of the game, um, but are free to come back to it at any time they like. In order to create that motivation to make them want to come back, we designed a park to provide a changing and ever more wonderful experience with each visit. So new mini games are added, harder difficulty modes are unlocked as the main story progresses, giving you even more to do there. I need there to be a shady GP drug dealer. Come on, please. They're gonna do it. I know they're gonna do it. There's gonna be some guy in the in the background and you get off you get off like the, the cart and he's like, hey kid. He's like smoking and shit. Hey, you want some GP? And he's got some like fake ass money. And you like, yeah, I'll take some, I'll take some. And you gotta go to him and he's like in a shadow. He's like, yeah, you want some. And he's like a drug dealer and he gives you like the fake money. Yeah, fuck yeah. And sometimes he's not there. And you're like, where'd he go? And you gotta like hunt him down, but you buy it. Yes, that's what I need. I need that to be there. It's not just the mini games either, and the parts of the gold saucer and the scene in the main story have also been fully remade and upgraded too, so you can expect great things. God damn. Uh, they, 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 uh, I, don't even, I don't even know what to say. I feel like I have to pro provide explanation of why I sound like a crazy person constantly when describing FF7. I have to describe, I have to give explanation for these things, but at this point, I don't think I need to do anymore. I, I think I've done enough. The trailer also shows moments of the party exploring the lush exterior. How do those large areas work within the context of gameplay? Oh my God, Hamaguchi just my brain right now. Once the team leaves Midgar, Cloud and the team's major objective in Rebirth is to follow and track Sephiroth across the expansive world they find themselves in. We've put a lot of emphasis on exploration-focused game design. With this title, as we wanted to create a feeling of going on a journey while traveling around the world in pursuit of the evidence of Sephiroth's movements. Okay. So that's just accompanying all the stuff that they have been saying before, is that yes, we want to create a game of exploration. We want to create the same feeling that you had when you left Midgar in the OG7 is that you are now on an adventure and you need to be able to run around and explore the world in that adventure. So now you're several years into remaking the iconic locations and with FF7 Remake being so successful, do you feel less pressure to match fan expectations when reimagining beloved areas and moments? I would expect they feel more. So Hamaguchi, again, gameplay guy. Um, Rebirth will take players to various locations across the world, so we, re we needed to recreate the massive world map that would also incorporate places such as towns, dungeons within itself. To do that, we dug deeply into the feeling of each different region and reflected that in the graphics, creating areas that look and feel quite diversive. On top of that, we designed chocobos unique to each region so that they have their own abilities. Oh my god, he's confirming it. Mountain chocobos can climb up cliffs. Sky chocobos can fly. Oh. So players will need to utilize their chocobos to fully explore. Oh my fuck. I hope players will have a lot of fun with this app. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just say everything perfectly. Granted, no breeding. 
No chocobo. There's chocobos in each area that you need to get, but no chocobo breeding. Maybe not. But maybe to get the later good ones, maybe that's safe for either part three? I don't know. They are making chocobos an integral part of the game design and the exploration of the game, clearly. We design chocobos unique for every region to have their own abilities, like climbing and flying, so that players can utilize those f***ing chickens to explore every area and have a lot of fun with this aspect. Damn. Maybe they took out chocobo breeding. Maybe not. We don't know. It's it's weird is that do we have fond memories of chocobo breeding or was it kind of grindy? I think it was I think it's funny. I think there I think it definitely needs to be there in some way. It does not need to be the exact same way as it was before. It does not need to have cuz what was the grindy part about chocobo breeding? It was the racing chat. It was the fact that you literally had to grind your chicken uh, is their face against the walls of the racing courses while glitching out the stamina gauge of chocobo races. You literally grinded their faces against the walls. I'm not even being metaphorical there as you zipped across the entire match to beat Dio eventually. If that wasn't an integral part of it, then that's fine. Who knows? Like maybe you actually have like some sort of stat modified to your chocobo where you just build like a relationship with them or some way, right? Maybe they level up in some way. So that could be way better instead of having to do specifically just that thing and a whole bunch of the, maybe there's, there's probably a lot more stuff that they can do in terms of making making the, the chocobo breeding stuff more interesting this paragraph is orgasmic i can't even seven remake offered new interpretations of classic locations and moments as well as entirely new ones that that enriched the game is there a similar balance for FF7 Rebirth? Katasi says, as with the previous game, we have strived for the right balance between old and new scenes in 7 Rebirth, but we also tried to take on more new challenges than we did uh, with 7 Remake, with some of the new scenes. I am confident these new scenes will be wildly enjoyed for fans and newcomers alike. Yeah. What is the function of the... Oh, dude, are, you, are we going here? What is the function of the world map in Rebirth and Hamaguchi is... Okay, here we go. Get ready. Hold on. Hold on. So the world map is vast and expansive. So not all of the locations on it will be used in main story alone. In fact, volume-wise, the amount of content or side content in Rebirth is nearly double that the main quest offers. Players who want to enjoy FF7 setting on an even deeper level can explore all the corners of the world, discovering many different and exciting experiences such as new stories, battles, and mini games. It will also be possible to return to any of the regions in the world, even after the main quest moves on from that area, so you don't have to worry about leaving things behind or unfinished. Oh my God. So you're just saying we can fast travel back most likely. What they're kind of explaining is is a problem that is presented in the OG game, and it's pretty much Fort Condor, where Fort Fort Condor side quest is a thing that you have to engage with at certain points of the game and go back to, and make sure it continues like appropriately. I I think right, so that that was kind of cumbersome that you didn't have an airship and you had to cross the ocean all these times and it was kind of like uh it was kind of like a pain in the ass so, so if you could just like zip back to an area that was across the entire friggin ocean just to be like okay yeah let's let's check out what's going on here again and now i have new means to travel about this area because i have new chickens i got a buggy or whatever that that's fun right so they're not gonna lock the zones or anything. Yeah, Fort Condor was exhausting. It, I, I think it's, it, it is one of the best rewards in the game, granted. Its reward is easily one of the most OP things in FF7, so you kind of have to do it if you want to take on big bosses. But ultimately, it's not super fun. And the, the, the mini game itself isn't great, you know? You detest Fort Condor? It's not, it, it is easily one of the weakest mini games in the whole game. But still, you know, we found ways around it. You can just like skip it and let the fight happen at the top and you can just cheese it now. That's wild that there's that much side quest content. Just gonna throw it out there. That immediately doesn't trigger a like, like a huge guttural reaction because we just experienced another Square Enix game that had a, a ton of side quest content and a, a small portion of it was actually like worth it and like good. 
So uh, my immediate impression is like, okay, so we're just going to get to a town, talk to a person, run around, talk to the person again, run back, talk to the first person, and then that's done. Like, and it needs to be more engaging than that. So ultimately, FF7 Remake did have some side content that was pretty good. The original FF7 did, or 7 Remake, sorry. But not all of it was like premium, and not all the areas in 7 Remake were premium. So ultimately, it, it feels like, yeah, if this is more Yakuza-like, if this is more like Witcher-like, where the side content is a premium, they seem to be already confident enough to create side content that's missable. We're gonna create mini games for our optional, potentially optional side content that's missable. So you, you, we're gonna spend time on this shit and have you not be able to do it. So that's, that's an important stance to take already. That yeah, you need to, you're gonna need to create things that we can go into the world and not engage with it at all And you're gonna spend development time on that shit And that is gonna be a part of the game because guess what? That's a part of the original Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy 7 is a game where you do not have to engage with a lot of side content But it was genuinely great and it was really fun But having that shit there is a is important, right? You need to realize that you're gonna be wasting development time and resources on shit that people could miss That is an important part of the game though and they have said that before. They said that, yeah, we're, we're creating literally mini games for side content, potentially things that are optional. Oh, what can you tell us about the soundtrack? Oh God, uh, I, I'm assuming that we're gonna get a lot of reused tracks from uh, FF7R because they just went so ham on the music, dude. They went so ham. The world of Rebirth is much larger than Remake, so because of this, the team has created a variety of new music to go alongside that. We also expanded the variety of musical genres this time around. What? There was already a ton of genres. Did I miss one? Uh, I'll go back in a second. So I think there will be plenty to enjoy. Of course, we have many rearrangements of classic tracks from the original seven. So I hope fans will be enjoying comparing the both iterations from the same song to see what's changed. For example, the music in the newly released trailer is a rearrangement of the Final Fantasy VII main theme. Oh, I noticed. As a battle music track to give you a taste of the direction. I friggin' noticed, man. I was like, dude, is this the, is this the world theme? Like, what is going on? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. Okay. Not worried about the music. If there's one thing I ain't worried about is the music for FF7 Remake games. So Amaguchi said, given this direction, um, the continuation of FF7 Remake, and players port over their save file and their character builds to continue their journey? Damn, this is a great question. I'm assuming no. We have announced that Remake Project will be a trilogy and that each entry will be a standalone game. Because of this, each game's balancing is done independently and the player's levels and abilities will not carry over to the next. However, we have created special bonuses for fans who played the previous, allowing them to start with a little something extra. Okay, so I think I, this was talked about before, right? You're, it's a continued story. It's a continued three-part narrative, but every game is different. They are, this, isn't a, this isn't a dot hack game, right? Where we're literally making the same game. It's just longer and your save data continues, it's not that. Every game is gonna be vastly different from one to the next. You're not starting at level 50 or anything like that? Probably not. I think all of your damage is gonna get reset. The balancing of the games are gonna get reset. You know, this is, it's different than that. Uh, what was the concept behind the new trailer? Every trailer has a specific purpose. So since this is the second installment of the Seven Remake project, there are people who have played the previous game or enthusiastic fans to follow the built-in mysteries, but for newcomers, those who are simply interested in Final Fantasy VII, we wanted to include a full overview of what kind of experience they will have in the remake project. Yeah, it did a pretty good job at that. So there is a there is less of a mysterious pretense to the story this time around, but you can look forward to the next trailer. Oh, oh, oh. He's admitting that they don't go ham on the Zack story stuff in this trailer, he's pretty much admitting that. We don't go ham on 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 story spoilers, timeline stuff. They do say some things, mind you, but they're saying the next trailer is probably gonna go ham. I'm gonna throw it out there that the next trailer is likely the Game Awards. It's gonna be around uh, December-ish in this year, and it'll probably be more focused on Zack stuff and potentially Sid. Right? We'll probably see more on big reveals. They'll probably get a, a, a reveal if Vincent is actually playable in some way, but we'll get Zack stuff instead. Skipping that trailer to avoid spoilers. No, that trailer I do want to watch. I am going to be very cautious about the launch trailer. 
like the, the few weeks before the game comes out or like the week before the game comes out, the launch trailer was poisonous for FF7 Remake. That is where I have a deep concern. So I'm, I'm genuinely glad I did not watch the final trailer. It, 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 it always has problems. And I think even with uh, Final Fantasy 16, historically Square Enix just goes ham for some reason. And they were like, what? I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna wait on that one. But everything before that like is, is leading up to hype, right? It's still building us up to a not complete spoilery fountain, but things that we've already been assuming might be the case. Anyway, that's actually a great answer from Nomura pretty much acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're, we're leaving a brooding era of mystery around our previous trailers, but not so much in this one. There was a scene with Cloud and Sephiroth fighting together. Will the player be, dude, is this still going? Holy shit. Will the player be able to get control of Sephiroth in Rebirth? I think so. If you play the original seven, I'm sure you can guess which scene I'm talking about, but you will be able to control Sephiroth in the same scene in this title as you did in the original flashback scene. Yeah, we get it, we know. We know, but here's the different part, right? It isn't gonna be like uh, menu selections. I just press attack with Sephiroth or use some of his OP magic, right? It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be that. It's, and it's just the one scene, right? Well, granted, it is just the one scene, but the one scene is long. The one scene they're talking about is pretty lengthy. It could, it could potentially be like an hour to two hours of actual like gameplay. Did, did we not control him in the original? Yeah, he just acted, didn't he? I think I'm thinking of like Game Shark codes. In the original, he just like did his own thing. You're right, he was an AI. So that will be different if we actually control him. Run around as Sephiroth and whack shit. Good point. That That is definitely, again, you can check his equipment. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it was menu shit. Um, I'm thinking of new threat. God damn it. Stupid fan made stuff is manipulating my opinions, uh, manipulating my memories. Yes, people want to run around as whack shit as Sephiroth. It, that is a thing. And if you're making a Final Fantasy remake in modern times, yeah, you make Sephiroth playable, obviously. Uh, not for the whole game, but you allow people to play as Sephiroth again or, or Sephiroth for the first time. Might be like Sonon. Nah, I think he'll be. Here's saying if. Uh, you will be able to control Sephiroth as you did in the original. Uh oh, this is confusing. I'll, I'll throw it out right now by saying as you did in the original. In the original, he sort of auto attacked. If he, if he, okay, I'll throw this out right now. This is confusing as shit. Goddamn Nomurian, goddamn transcripts here, dude. If this translates as it does, then he's gonna be like Red Thirteen at the end of Seven Remake, where he just like runs around and shit, and you could combo with him. And you can do stuff with him, like Sonon potentially, but he doesn't technically like, you can't run around as Sephiroth and whack shit. That would be disappointing because I think people would like to, I, I want to run around as Cloud and then I want to switch to Sephiroth and whack shit and then switch back to back to Cloud. Like that is the point, right? Or maybe Tifa with, in, in a cowboy costume. Nomura is describing this shit as in, you're not going to be controlling him like the original. It's just going to be you as Cloud and Sephiroth works with you and you can dual tech with him. But as we saw in the trailer, right? He means like OG FF7. Yeah, if this is as the Nomurian text explains, then Sephiroth will not be controllable by the player. It'll be like Integrade, where you can do some team attacks and stuff, but running around to Sephiroth and mashing the attack button on enemies and shit is not gonna be possible. That to me would be disappointing. Again, Nomurian translation we have to deal with for two times now about like Vincent and Sid potentially not being playable. That would suck if they're not playable. And now also Sephiroth, what the shit, man? Why do we need, a, why do we need, <laughs> we need somebody to translate the translation. I'm so confused. The gold saucer appears uh, in the newly released trailer, but will players be able to enjoy the much anticipated date scene on the Ferris wheel too? Of course. Oh God, Nomura is gonna answer shit. Here we go. We're ready for a roller coaster. This is one of the major highlights of the Golden Saucer, so it's included. Okay. Good. Please look forward to how it'll appear in Rebirth with high resolution visuals. Okay. Good. I didn't need to consult the Elder Gods on that one. Thank God. Uh, Rebirth or Remake showed the story up to the escape from Midgar. But what point does FF7 Rebirth take a... Oh no, Nomura's answering. Can I get Hamaguchi to answer? Can I get the Hamaguchi answer here? Um, all right. I'm, uh, 
We've mentioned this a few times before, but the order in which you can explore locations is not the same as the original Final Fantasy VII. There are some shifts in the order. For example, Wutai, one of the major locations, is not part of the route in Rebirth and will be visited in the next one. Okay, fair enough. Literally optional content was no shit optional content in the original Final Fantasy VII. You did not need to go there at all. So that's fair. If they're going to make Wutai a big part of part three, cool. Completely fine with that. Although, there are some changes in the order of the locations. The locations depicted in this title extend up to the Forgotten Capital. 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 Whoa, they said it. They just said it. So the Forgotten City is there. What's that? Um, in the original game, it's the end of disc one. And there's a big moment that happens at the end of disc one. It's they're called the Forgotten City in the original game. They're calling it the Forgotten Capital. It probably is called that in the Japanese version. Um, so he specifically mentions order of events. Here's, here's a big question. Is the Forgotten City gonna be in the same place? Because let's be real. The location of the Forgotten City was always kind of weird in FF7. You pretty much show up on a beach, you run into a forest, you go through a fake forest, like a mock forest, and then you're at like the capital. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm here. And it's kind of odd that after that, then you run up and you're in, you're, you're in like the glacier. And it's like, oh, that's funny. Like I am... I, I'm here, and now you're in the glacier, and then you move to the top. I, I wonder if they're just gonna move it, right? Could be more close to the Forgotten City? Yeah, maybe they'll merge them? I don't know. So anyway, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the huge news. This is big. The, reading this again, this is uh, in, immediately kind of disappointing, right? Granted, it's not that disappointing because to me, there was always there was always two places FF7 Remake was going to end at, or at least part two. It was always going to end at the end of disc one in the Forgotten City, or it was going to end at the top of the world with uh, the the crater, right? With the with the the crater and the summoning of meteor. There were there was there was those two. A lot of people were thinking, oh, it's going to end at you know, uh, it was going to end at Temple of the Ancients. It was going to end at. Uh, Cloud Sometime. Why am I brain farting? I'm still lacking sleep right now. It was going to end at Nibelheim. Like, no, I don't think those are appropriate thematic story places to, to drop that shit. Before this is mentioned, we're mentioning this was said a few times before. The order in which you explore locations is not the same. The original seven, and there are several shifts in that order. Using Wutai as an example, you're not going to Wutai in this game but there are some changes in the order of the locations. The locations depicted in this title extend to the Forgotten Capital. He has to remind you three times in the same paragraph, shit is changing. Our story ends in the Forgotten Capital. We have already seen shit in the trailer that alludes to stuff that happens in the story much later, like even after the Forgotten City and shit, much later. We saw Medeal, we saw potentially shit that happens thematically in the Northern Crater already, weapon stuff, which is like much later. It's like, whoa, okay. The big part of this story is the reunion, right? The, the big part of Final Fantasy VII Part Two is reunion. When does the reunion take place, chat, in the original story? So maybe the reunion doesn't happen. That's a, that's a chance, right? There's a chance that's happening. The locations depicted in this title extend up to the Forgotten Capital. Okay, I'm gonna throw it out right now. I'm gonna throw it out. He doesn't say it ends at the Forgotten Capital. I'm gonna throw this out right now. Here's my prediction and how I think it will go and how I would prefer it to go. I think the Forgo Forgotten Capital is gonna be past the glacier sequences. I just think it's they're gonna move the Forgotten Capital past the crater scene or into the crater. That's where I think it's gonna happen. I think the characters going through the snow and snowboarding, I think that shit's actually going to be in the game. I think that's safe for the next trailer. But they're just going to move the Forgotten City and the, the events of that stuff past the discovery of weapons, past all that stuff. But what would happen if Aerith? Maybe the thing that happened... Again, the events of the Forgotten Capital, I don't think will take place right past the Bone Village. 
I didn't because that's where the, the forgotten capital is. So you have to think about that. What if they just move the forgotten capital up? past the events, what happens at the Forgotten pa Capital, past the events of Glacier, past the events of Bone Village, past the events of all that shit, and just put it, you know, way later in there. That's my bet. That's what I think is gonna happen. Instead of like, oh, is it gonna end at the end of disc one? Well, maybe they're just gonna move the end of disc one a bit higher up, literally more north. So maybe, obviously, the, the big gimmick of the characters is to get to the top of the world. Maybe the, the weapons wake up and then Aerith says the prayer. I d and maybe Aerith says the prayer at the Forgotten Capital after that shit. That's my copium. Yeah, that definitely is my copium. There is already a couple of things in the story that are like, where are we? Wait, wait, this takes place in the Northern Crater. Are, that might not take place there, granted. But how do we, how would we know? Where would confirmation be? What visuals would we need to get any kind of, any kind of confirmation that where the story is going? And the answer is, is Aerith running around with characters in snow. That's it. In some point in the latest trailers, if they show environments where Cloud and the characters and Aerith are fighting with each other in snow, in some way, shit has changed. It's moved. They moved the Forgotten City straight up. But we haven't seen that yet. There's still a lot more stuff. There's still four months of trailers that they could potentially do. Or if there's snow at all. Yeah, if there is no snow, if there is nothing like that, then, you know, that is, they're keeping events the same. They're keeping things and locations the same, just moving apart plot points. Ooh, this is exciting. This is exciting. If we see the characters like running around in a snowy environment, I think that is confirmation they moved the Forgotten City further and the events that that plot point, they moved maybe ahead of the reunion scene. Maybe they moved that shit completely away. In my opinion, that's better. I have to remind you, and I I have said this before. I've said this a few times before. The events of the Forgotten City at the end of disc one and what happens right after when you get to the capital, I'm sorry, when you get to the Northern Crater for the reunion are fucking weird in OG FF7. You have a very serious event that happens and the next thing you do is snowboard down a mountain with your friends. It's fucking weird. If there's a thing that you could change in the original story is where those events happen. It's super odd. It's, it's it's an emotional whiplash is the best time to describe it. That is one of the best reasons why you can move the Forgotten Capital to a different part. Have all the snowboarding shit. Have the blizzard. Have all that fun. Keep all that shit, right? Just make, just move that plot point area up north. Just move it further up. And, you know, I'll, I'll be real. Doesn't it make a lot more sense thematically? If Meteor is called, if, what, where, where is it? Yes, Meteor is being fucking summoned, dude, right? Doesn't it make a lot more sense if this event maybe happens? Like, oh God, we're gonna die. This chick is gonna say her prayer. She's gonna, she's gonna use the white materia prayer, right? Hmm, maybe that should happen after that happens. That, to me, that makes a lot more sense. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I, that, I think that's what they're gonna do. I, I would do that. If you're gonna move those events around, I think it makes a lot more sense just to to put the Forgotten City later. And again, how are we how, are we ever gonna get confirmation of this? I think confirmation of any of this shit happening is if we see characters in a storm or in the snow. Yeah, hold on a second, uh, that's a good call. <laughs> and very appropriate, considering that we don't know. <laughs> very appropriate. My thick-ass brain prediction is that Aerith, in her huge plot moment, uh, is saying a prayer to protect the planet from Meteor or some shit. And the, the reunion, the Northern Crater, all those situations happen first, and then the, the moments of the Forgotten City, the elements of the Forgotten City happen after. I am gonna, that's what I think is gonna happen. I think this people are, are uh, this might, and I, it's, a ma it's a massive copium on my end, but I think some people are looking at this as like, that's obviously a place you can end it, but the dude literally, goddamn Nomurian text back here. We're sitting here translating the Nomurian texts, consulting the elder gods again. He does mention several times, stuff is changing, stuff is changing, stuff is changing. It's gonna to extend to the Forgotten Capital. All right. All right. 
Yeah, this is just making me more interested, to be real. This is so cool, dude. This is, this shit was incredible. Oh my God. Everything in here was incredible. The Nomurian texts, not so much. Some stuff was like, uh, the, 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 the Vincent and Sid stuff. Okay, I'm confused and we don't know. Uh, are they going to be playable? Confused and we don't know. And what was the other one? Uh, the obviously ending, like, where, where is the Forgotten Capital actually going to be? We don't know. And Sephiroth being playable. Not actual confirmation of Sephiroth being playable. Just more confusion. Jesus! All right. Now Square is going in officially. God damn, dude.